Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 13, Solving Systems of Equations. So we're going to solve systems of equations today. So first of all, we're given this picture here, this graph, um, with two lines from the equations y equals uh, negative x plus 10, and also y equals 2x plus 4. So those are the two lines that we have there, okay? And so it says to use the lines to decide whether each statement is true or false and be prepared to explain your reasoning using the lines. So what we can see first of all is that this one here is 8 equals negative 8x plus 10 is 2. So think of it like this. This is the y from this same equation right here. So we're saying instead of y, we're going to say it's equal to 8. So when y equals 8, so here's y, when y equals 8, x is going to be equal to 2. If y is 8 and I go across here to x, do I have a point on that line at 2 comma 8? The answer there would be yes, that's going to be true because I have a point at 2 comma 8, that's going to be a true statement. Okay, just looking at the graph visually. For number 2, it says a solution to 2 equals 2x plus 4. Again, this is the y for the second one here. 2x plus 4 is 8. So the, que the question what they're saying here is that if y is 2, if y is 2, is x going to be 8? So I'm looking for that point. If y is 2, is x going to be 8? And is that going to be on that line? Well, let's take a look here. Where is 8? Here's 8 and here's 2 somewhere about here. Well there's a point on a line but what line is that on, right? This is 8 comma 2 that's the point but notice we want the point to be on the line 2x plus 4 that's this line right here. So This is going to be false and the reason for that false is it's a point on the wrong line and that's why that's false there. It is a point but it's not on the correct line. If it helps you out here maybe I should do this I can make this a yellow line here, okay? And that's the 2x plus 4, okay? And here's the, two, well, I won't get there yet. And then over here, I have, I can make this one blue, how about that? And then here is the blue line, okay? And there's a negative x plus 10. And so what you can see here is that, yes, there's a point, but I want a point for the yellow line, it's in the wrong spot, okay? A solution to negative x plus 10 equals 2x plus 4 is 8. Okay, so solution is going to be 8 for something like that. Well, let's see what that means. Negative x plus 10 equals 2x plus 4. Notice what I have here is I have x's. So my solution they're saying is x, meaning I'm looking for x equals 8. x equals 8. If I took a line at x equals 8, which is right about here, right here's where eight's going to be there do i have a point anywhere on that line where the two lines intersect together intersect meaning together yeah if we look here the intersection occurs here i have a line they do cross the line x equals eight at some point but not together this is going to be a false statement it's just not true if i was to try to solve this using algebra negative x plus 10 equals 2x plus 4. If I added x to this side, I get 3x over here. And if I subtract 4 to this side, I get 6 over here. And so divide by 3, divide by 3, and we have x equals 2. That is not the same as x equals 8, is it? Notice the next question says, a solution to negative x plus 10 equals 2x plus 4 is 2. So what we're saying is, if I do this math, will x equal 2? We just proved that right there. That indeed is going to be a true statement. And the reason that's going to be true is that when I look at the point 2, being right about here, there is a spot where the two lines intersect when x equals 2. And it's right there at the point 2, comma 8. And it says there are no values of x and y that make this and this true at the same time. That would be a false statement. And the reason that's false is that because we can see that the point 2 comma 8 is true for both equations. That becomes a solution 
to these equations. This is how we solve systems of equations, which is what we're looking at today. Let's look at the next page. Here are the three systems of equations graphed on coordinate planes. So we have three systems here, all right? Match each figure to one of the systems of equations shown here. Notice that a couple things. I see this one has a negative slope and a positive slope. Okay, so I have a negative slope and a positive slope. Here I have positive and positive, so going up and going up. And here I have a positive and a positive going up and going up. So just knowing that part there, looking at here I have positive, negative, positive, 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 positive. I can already tell that this one right here, because I have positive and negative, is going to be the one that goes with graph letter A. Okay, because of that negative slope right there, that's the only one that's going to match that spot right there. Just do little shortcuts, right? Looking at these ones though, now I have positive, 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 positive for my slope. So it could be either one of those, but I do have the y-intercepts. So which one has a y-intercept of a negative 10 and a negative 1? Well, that means it's down here on this, this part over here. Here's a negative 10 and a negative 1. So C is going to go there. And this one has a positive 12, which is here, and a positive 27, which is there. So B would go right there, right? It has two positive y-intercepts. And this has two negative y-intercepts. So that's how you're able to kind of quickly discern what, which one goes to which one. Now it says to find the solution to each system and check that your solution is reasonable based upon the graph. Okay, so our solutions are going to be these points where these two graphs intersect, or these two lines intersect. That point there, that point there, and then finally this point over here. So we're going to try to solve these systems of equations and see what we can come up with. So let's look at um, A first of all. This is the graph for A. So we're going to look at these two lines right here. We have y equals 3x plus 5, and then y equals negative 2x plus 20. Now before I do this, let me back up real quick here because I forgot to do this in the last section. There is a property called the transitive property. That's really important what we're doing in this section right here. The transitive property allows you to do this, okay? It allows you to set equations equal to each other, okay? Meaning that when you know what something is, um, you can plug that into something else. Okay, um, so this is what we're gonna look at. Let me show you with A. The transitive property allows you to say this. Because we said that Y equals that amount, I can then say that I can take this amount right here and put it in the place of that Y right there. So instead of writing out, for example, Y equals negative 2X plus 20, the transitive property allows me to replace this Y with the other value of y, which was 3x plus 5. And in its essence, I'm just setting them equal to each other. 3x plus 5 equals negative 2x plus 20. That's what I can do because of the transitive property. So now I'm going to add 2x to here, add 2x to there, and I have 5x. I'm going to subtract 5 and subtract 5. So 5x equals 15. 20 minus 5 is 15. I'll divide both sides by 5 so that x equals 3. Now I'm not done because I want to find a solution and a solution is going to be an x and a y coordinate here. So that's my x coordinate. So to find the y, I need to plug this value into one of my equations. y equals 3x plus 5. Let's plug the 3 right there. So we have 3 times 3 plus 5. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 5 is 14. So my coordinate that's a solution to these equations is 3 comma 14. And that's what I get for the graph A. Okay, now what I have here, if I look at A, is 3, 14. Does that look like it's about 3 comma 14? I'd say yeah, it sure does look like it's about 3, 14. That looks like an appropriate solution. Let's take a look at B. B is right here, so let's be careful. You don't do what I did last night when I was doing it on my own. I flip flop them around a little bit. So B is right here. So we're going to use a transitive property and say that 0.5x plus 12 equals 2x plus 27. 
All right, so let's subtract 0.5x, subtract 0.5x. This gives me a 1.5x on this side, and that's gonna be equal to subtract 27, subtract 27. 27 and negative 27 plus a 12 is gonna give me a negative 15, okay? Divide both sides by 1.5. And negative 15 divided by 1.5 is going to give you a negative 10, which equals x. All right. Now I'm going to plug that value into one of my other equations. Let's do y equals 2x plus 27. So we're going to plug that in right there. So 2 times negative 10 is negative 20 plus 27. It's going to give you just a regular old 7. So my coordinate solution is going to be negative 10 comma 7. Let's take a look up at B and say, does that look like a negative 10 comma seven? Well, yeah, it's about that, right? It's pretty close to negative 10, right? Negative 10 and up seven, that looks pretty good. That's a pretty good, good one there. <coughs> and finally, let's take a look at C <coughs> for C. Again, transitive property allows me to put these equal to each other. So two X minus 10 equals four X minus one. <coughs> To subtract 2x subtract 2x so we have 2x over here add 1 add 1 equals and negative 10 plus 1 it's gonna be a negative 9 we divide both sides by 2 and so I end up with negative 9 over 2 or negative 4 and a half however you want to think about that equals x now I need to plug that back into my equation I'm gonna use this one here I'm gonna do 2 <coughs> times negative nine over two minus 10, because that cancels out. And I'm left with negative nine minus 10, which is negative 19. So my X and Y values are gonna be, I could do negative nine over two comma negative 19 and be good to go. Oh, this also could be negative four and a half, depending if you wanna rewrite that or not. So I'm looking at negative four and a half comma negative 19, I go back to my graph, negative four and a half, negative 19, that looks about right, so we must have got that one right as well. Okay, and we do that again, solving it with the transitive property in that case there. So, three, it says different types of systems. Your teacher gave you a page with some systems of equations. You had to graph them on your own, okay, on the coordinate plane and describe what they look like. Okay, so here's some basics, just kind of recap. Again, this is an activity you did in class today. If there's one solution, then the graph is gonna have one point of intersection. If there's no solution, you're gonna probably have parallel lines that never meet. If there's infinite many solutions, you're gonna have a line and a line right on top of that. They're gonna be the same line. And so you have infinite solutions because any point on, that, on those two lines are a solution to that equation there. Okay, so in summary today, the key thing here is that what we're looking for as a solution is we're looking for a pair of values that make both equations true. That's what we're trying to find as we go through this there. Okay, and so in general, if you read through your summary there, in general, a system of linear equations can have no solutions, exactly one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. Those are typically the choices you have when you're working with systems of equations. Okay, so we're gonna pause there and then we're gonna start our homework for tonight and then you can check it to see how you did. All right, so here's our homework for tonight, lesson 13. Okay. So we have a couple things. I'm gonna highlight this one right here just in yellow so it looks a little different. We have a yellow one right there. And I have a nice blue one right here. Those are my two graphs. And two Perfect, okay. So write the equations for the lines shown. So let's take a look at the blue one here. We have y equals, now we can look at our slope, we can find a point and we can find another point, which is right there. I can see I'm going up one, two, three, and over one. So my slope is three x. Now for my y-intercept value, it's crossing the y-intercept at y equals two. So that's three x plus two. For, for this one, <laughs> y is gonna be equal to 
And notice that here I'm crossing it at eight. I'm going down one, two, three, and over one. So my slope is negative three x, and my y-intercept is at eight. So negative three x plus eight. I can also see that I have a point of intersection right here at one comma five, one comma five. Okay, I wasn't asked that yet, but I'm just writing it down for my notes. So, write the equations. We got the equations there, no problem. Describe how to find the solution to the corresponding system by looking at the graph. To look at the graph, we're going to find the point of intersection. Where do they come together? And as we just mentioned, they come together at the point 1, 5. Describe how to find the solution to the corresponding system by using the equations. To do it with equations, we're going to set them equal to each other, right? We would say negative 3x plus 8 equals 3x plus 2. And in doing that, right, if I add 3x over here, add 3x over there, you have 6x, subtract 2, oops, 3x plus 2, subtract 2 equals 8 minus 2 is 6. And so we divide by 6, and so x equals 1. So the first step is to set them equal to each other to solve for x and then we take the solution for x and put that into one of our equations 3 times 1 plus 2 to solve for y 3 plus 2 is 5 so y equals 5 1 comma 5 that's our process there set them equal to each other solve for x use the value of x in the equation to then solve for y and you come up with your points there the solution to the system of equations is 5 comma negative 19. Choose two equations that might make up the system. Okay, so we're looking for a system where this is going to work, where I can put this value of x into the equation and come up with that value of y. All right, so let's take a look at a. a would be negative 3 times, again, 5 minus 6. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Negative 15 minus 6 is a negative 21. Nope, that does not work. We can cross off A. This one, we get 2 times 5 minus 23. 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 minus 23 is going to be negative 13. It does not equal negative 19, so we're going to say no. Again, my goal is negative 19. That's my goal here. This one, I have negative 7 times 5 plus 16. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35 plus 16. And negative 35 plus 16 equals negative 19. That will work. For D, we're going to put in 5 minus 17, which is going to be equal to negative 12. That does not equal negative 19, so we're going to say no. And our last one, negative 2 times 5 minus 9. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 minus 9, and negative 10 minus 9 is negative 19. That will work. So I have two solutions here. I have C and E. That will work. On the page, we're going to solve these systems of equations. So here we go. Let's set them equal to each other using the transitive property once again. So we're going to say 4x minus 3 equals negative 2x plus 9. All right, I'm going to zoom just a tad bit there. Let's add 2x, add 2x, we have 6x equals, we're going to add 3, add 3, 6x equals 12. Divide both sides by 6 so that x equals 2. So I have an x value, now let's plug that x value into one 